These are the nine balance training methods ranked according to its ability to reduce fall risk. Stand on one leg right now. Did you make it over five seconds? If not, you're at high fall risk. Scientists analyzed 39 clinical trials involving nearly 1,400 seniors. They ranked different balance exercises using Sucre scores. It's a ranking system from 0 to 100%, where higher scores mean better reactive balance. I've organized each one into a tier list with S for super and F for fail. You might be shocked at how that one leg stand you just did that doctors recommend actually ranked. Make sure you stay to the end where I'll show you the single best balance method and a training plan to improve your reflexes, stay independent and prevent falls. Let's start with the baseline. Number one, doing nothing. This means you're not doing any exercise at all. Here's why this matters for what we're about to discuss. If an exercise barely beats doing nothing, you're wasting your time. Keep that in mind because some expert recommended exercises you're about to see aren't much better than sitting on your couch. We can put this in the F tier, which is obviously at the bottom. Number two, static balance. This is what 95% of physical therapists teach. Standing on one leg when you're ready, tandem stance with your heel to toe, walking in straight lines, and foam pad balance work. Picture this scenario. You're walking to your car while juggling groceries, someone calls your name, you turn your head, step on uneven pavement, and start falling. Standing on one leg in your living room when you're fully focused simply didn't train you for that moment. But what if you combined it with the other static exercises I mentioned earlier? Well, this is exactly what my neighbor Jean was doing for months. She followed her doctor's recommendations and it still failed her when she needed it most. Here's the key insight that explains everything. Static balance training teaches you to balance when you're ready and focused. But falls happen when you're not ready, when you're distracted and moving. Your body learns to maintain control in calm conditions, but real life isn't calm. Which tier should we put this? C tier, middle of the pack. Now watch what happens when you add just one element to these exact same exercises. Number three multiple balance exercises with surprises. Take those same exercises we just talked about. Standing on one leg, tandem stance, foam pad balance, but now add unexpected pushes, pulls, or surface shifts while you're doing them. The difference is huge. You're not maintaining control in calm conditions anymore. You're reacting to chaos. This is much closer to real life because your friend accidentally bumps you, a crack in the sidewalk catches your foot, or someone opens a door as you're walking through. Life doesn't warn you before it destabilizes you, so training with surprises prepares you for reality. These exercises fall into A tier. Number four, strength training. Let's look at exercises focused on building physical capacity, lifting weights and resistance exercises that build muscle, Stronger muscles give you the power to catch yourself, step quickly, and grab support when you need it. Think about what happens when you start falling. You need explosive force to recover, and weak muscles simply can't generate that force fast enough. But strength alone isn't the complete answer to fall prevention. So these landed in B tier, representing solid results and meaningful improvement. Number five, whole body vibration. Whole body vibration is standing on vibrating platforms that shake at different frequencies. And you might have seen these at gyms or physical therapy clinics. This seemed gimmicky to me at first, but the research shows real benefits. Your muscles fire rapidly, dozens of times per second, just to maintain your position on the vibrating surface. Your body is constantly making tiny adjustments to stay stable which is similar to what happens during a fall when you need quick muscle responses. Some platforms vibrate up and down, others side to side, and some move in multiple directions at once. Physical therapists use these because they force your stabilizer muscles to work without putting stress on your joints. But while you're building physical capacity and training rapid muscle responses, the movements are still predictable. This also ranked B tier. Number six three-dimensional exercises. 
Three-dimensional exercises are movements that combine multiple directions at once, instead of just moving forward and backward or side to side. Because in real life, you rarely move in just one direction. You might bend down to tie your shoe while turning to talk to someone, or reach up into a high cabinet while standing on your toes and twisting to see what's in the back. These exercises mimic those complex real-world movements. Training examples include standing on one leg while reaching in different directions with your arms, or doing a lunge while rotating your upper body, or stepping in a star pattern where each step goes in a different direction. These train your body to maintain balance while moving in multiple planes at once, which is good and certainly better than simple exercises. But since the movements are still predictable, you're not teaching your muscles and strength to respond to chaos, which is what happens during falls. These also landed in B tier. Number seven, power training. Power training includes fast chair rises, quick direction changes, and rapid stepping patterns. Here's why this matters so much. There's a crucial difference between strength and power that most people don't understand. Strength is your ability to generate force, period. Power is your ability to generate force quickly, and that makes all the difference. Here's the problem. Muscle power declines three times faster than strength as you age. By the time you're 60, you've lost about 30% of your power, but only 10% of your strength. Imagine tripping on a curb while distracted by your phone. You have 200 milliseconds, less than a quarter of a second, to catch yourself before you hit the ground. If your muscles can't explode into action instantly, you're going down no matter how strong you are. Power training fixes that exact problem by teaching your muscles to generate force quickly. Strength without speed doesn't cut it when you only have 200 milliseconds to react. You need explosive power to train your body for real-world falls. Power training jumped to A tier. Number eight, gait training with surprises. Gait training with surprises is the same walking practice you might do on a treadmill. But now the treadmill speed changes randomly. Someone tosses you a ball while walking, or obstacles appear unexpectedly so you have to navigate while distracted. This matters because most falls happen while walking, not standing still. And they happen when you're surprised, not when you're focused and ready for them. Adding that element of surprise while walking trains reactive balance during the activity where most falls actually occur. This also reached A tier, but there's still one approach that dominates everything else we've talked about so far. Number nine, single balance with surprises. Remember exercise number two, static balance? Standing on one leg when you're ready and focused earned the middle of the pack at C tier. But what about standing on one leg while someone unexpectedly pushes you from different directions? It's the same exercise with one crucial difference. That element of surprise changes everything about how your body learns. Here's what this actually looks like in practice. Focused balance training where someone or something destabilizes you unexpectedly. You're standing on one leg and the platform suddenly tilts, or someone nudges you from behind without warning, and the research numbers are compelling. This approach produces a 46% reduction in fall risk and a 39% reduction in actual falls. No other exercise comes close to these numbers. The final verdict? S tier, the undisputed champion of fall prevention. I'm about to show you five effective methods to do this safely at home. Starting so gently, you'll think it's too easy. How to do S tier balance training. Method one, random direction pushes. Stand on one leg near a sturdy counter or chair for safety support. Have your partner stand behind or beside you and give gentle, unexpected pushes from different directions. Forward, backward, left, right, or diagonally. Start with very light pushes, just enough to make you shift your weight. As you improve over weeks, your partner can gradually increase the force. Do this for 30 seconds, rest, then repeat. Three to five sets, three times per week. If you're training alone, stand next to your support and create your own destabilization by reaching in random directions. Record yourself saying random directions with pauses like reach forward, reach left, reach back right, then play it back while you train. You won't remember the exact sequence, so it stays unpredictable. 
Method two, ball toss while balancing. Stand on one leg and have your partner toss you a ball from different angles and heights without warning. The catching motion shifts your center of gravity unexpectedly and you have to recover balance while completing the catch. Vary the timing, angle, and force of each toss so your body never knows what's coming. Advanced version, use two different colored balls and your partner calls out which color to catch right before they throw. So you're processing information while balancing and recovering. If you're training alone, stand near a wall and toss a small ball or bean bag at the wall, then catch it on the rebound. Vary your toss angle each time so the return is truly unpredictable. The catching motion creates the same balance challenge. Method three, surface destabilization. Stand on one leg on a foam balance pad or firm couch cushion. Have your partner gently tug or push the pad at random intervals, creating sudden shifts in the surface beneath you. This trains your body to handle ground level instability, like stepping on uneven pavement or a crack in the sidewalk. Your partner can also call out eyes closed at random times, forcing you to balance without visual input while the surface is already unstable. If you're training alone, stand on the foam pad and shift your weight in random patterns, or close your eyes for a few seconds at unpredictable intervals. Set a timer on your phone for random intervals between 5 and 15 seconds, and when it beeps, immediately change something. Close your eyes, reach in a direction, or shift your stance. Method 4. Walking Perturbations Walk slowly in a straight line while your partner walks beside you. At random moments, they give you a gentle nudge from the side, a light push from behind, or step slightly in front of you so you have to adjust your path. This trains reactive balance during movement, which is when most real falls occur. Start in a clear hallway or open space. As you improve, add complexity. Walk while carrying something, walk while talking, or walk while looking at your phone to mimic real-world distraction. If you're training alone, create a small obstacle course with different surfaces, a yoga mat, a towel, a foam pad, hardwood floor, carpet. Walk through it. Then progress to walking with your eyes closed for a few steps at a time. Rearrange the surfaces each session so your body never fully adapts. Walk forward, backward, then sideways to train different recovery patterns. Method 5. Rotational Challenges Stand on one leg and have your partner hold a ball or light object. They move it in unpredictable patterns, up, down, left, right, in circles, and you have to track it with your eyes and reach toward it without losing balance. The tracking and reaching create rotational forces that destabilize you in ways that static exercises never do. Your partner can also stand behind you and tap you on one shoulder or the other randomly, forcing you to turn your head and upper body quickly while maintaining single leg balance. If you're training alone, stand on one leg and track a moving target like a ceiling fan blade or a swinging pendulum you create or toss a ball up and track it with your eyes while maintaining balance. The visual tracking creates subtle postural shifts that train your reactive system. The beauty of this system is that whether you train with a partner or alone, you're using the same principles that produce the 46% fall risk reduction in the research. Now you have all nine different balance training methods I've organized into a tier list, plus the training plan you need to improve your reflexes, stay independent, and prevent falls. Don't forget to drop your name and where you're watching this from in the comments. I'd love to know more about you. If you found this helpful, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss future videos on staying strong and independent after 60.